Baby Charlie's mom, Chanel, was only 16 years old when he was born. In many communities, and many times, Charlie would be at risk of entering the child welfare system. Since 2007, not one child has left the Numgais Nation for government care, because in their community, care is not an option. From the language flows the culture and traditions of our people. We are Numgais. Foster care. Adoption. Group home. Care is not an option. The Numgis territory spans a number of islands around and on North Vancouver Island, including the village of Alert Bay. For generations, the Numgis people have lived connected with their land, water, and culture. In the Kwakwala language, this is called Gwa'ilelas. Their ways of life remain strong and their culture and language intact. Today, the community's efforts are focused on wellness, and the children are at the center of it. Like many of you, I've seen my share of dysfunction as a direct effect of that school. I plead to you that we return to a child-honoring system of raising our children. The Numgis Nation, like many other First Nations in Canada, are still impacted by the intergenerational trauma caused by the residential school system, including a long history of families involved with child welfare. The RCMP are often first on the scene for incidents of family violence, child abuse, or neglect. The last thing we want to do is to, is to break up families. A lot of times that decision is taken away. If an offense occurred, that's what's going to happen. We really strive to get in there early and make those interventions so we don't get to that point. All reports of child protection go through BC's Ministry of Children and Family Development. In Numgis territory, the local ministry office is based in Port Hardy. Paula France is the Director of Operations for the region. When people make reports of child protection, whether that's RCMP or whether that's just the public, there's what we call a centralized screening centre. They assess that information and it's given to the team leader within the local office. And then at that point, a social worker is assigned. In Namagay's territory, the social workers are from Kwakwalatsi Child and Family Services, a level three delegated agency operated by the community and governed by local chief and council. Through a delegation agreement, the ministry gives authority to Kwakwalatsi Child and Family Services to manage the child welfare cases in their own community. Delegated agencies are required by law to follow the Child and Family Service Act. We will get a call, but we have the time and the ability to reach out to the family. The family is the one that has the solution to the family's issue at hand. Dorothy Mountain has four children and has had social workers from Kwakwalatsi Child and Family Services knock on her door. I was sad, I was angry, and I felt lost. The Cease Youth is a mystical creature that represents spiritual balance and supernatural power. The serpent reaches two directions, one direction representing the good choices we make in life, and the other direction, the bad. I started 
at a young age and had a lot of struggles. I was stuck in my addiction. Just drink and drink and drink. Even though the social workers were local, Dorothy, like many others in the community, viewed them as child welfare and agents of a government system. We would come to the door and it would be, what the hell, and off she'd go. And again, absolute fear. It was something that I had to look at to say, they're not yelling at me personally, they're yelling at the hundreds of social workers and police officers and other helping agents that have come into the home and have not listened to them. I was not from the community, so I had to really do my work. It was that whole mentality of that the kids were going to be taken away. Where, oh, where are all the children? Where, oh, where are all the children? Where, oh, where are all the children? Where have children gone? the staff of Pohualatse Child and Family Services have adopted a strength-based practice when working with families and is the foundation of all relationships. When I lived here as a teenager, I remember how this community was. It, it wasn't a very healthy community. And coming back 35 years later, there's been a tremendous change in terms of how many healthy community members there are. From the school, to the daycare, to the health center, to child and family services, the agencies and programs in the community are designed and operated by Namgay's people for Namgay's people. And in their culture, the children are the most important part of the community. I think what we're finding now is a lot of grandparents or relatives are raising their relatives. As a teenage mother, Chanel has had to grow up quick. But it wasn't too long ago that Chanel's own safety was at risk, and she faced the possibility of government care. But her grandmother opened her door and not only saved Chanel, but likely baby Charlie too. Now that our grandson has moved into our house and is with us, our house is big. You know, it's big with feelings, it's big with love, it's big with caring. Our culture is a healing culture, and I think a lot of people are getting back to culture being part of every day, not just the ceremonies that happen in the big house, but part of every day. We want to be here for families and whatever it takes for them to be together, to become healthy, to say, okay, there's a crisis, who can do what? It is a community raising the child. It is grandparents, it is aunties. And so that is one of the teachings, I think that is a traditional teaching. The traditional approach to supporting mother and child in crisis has been key to Kwakwalatsi Child and Family Services success in keeping children out of care. However, as a delegated agency, they are careful to follow legislation and ensure that anyone involved in children's services has given consent to involving the community in their healing. Our job is not to solve the problem, but to bring resources. We're looking at a communal or interdisciplinary way of looking at services and supports for the family. Although family members are usually the first to open their doors, not all relatives can bring in children when needed. So there are times when Kwakwalatsi Child and Family Services has to get creative. Rachel Fulmore is non-Aboriginal and moved to the community to take a job as a nurse at the health center. And when Dorothy needed a place for her son, 
Rachel opened her home. Jeremy came into my home actually through the social workers here at, uh, at Numgis. It's been a few months that I've had him in and out of my home. And we'll just take it out just a little bit and then flip it back over. And now try your casting. I am under what's called the extended family plan right now. Even though I'm not technically a family member, I am part of his family because I'm doing all the same kind of things with him. The approach of surrounding the family with community support has required agencies, programs, leadership and staff to take a critical look at how they operate, ensuring that the professionals throughout the community are on the same page when they work with a family. Mental health, the school, the treatment centre, all of the services these families go in and out consistently. And we're all working together to support that family unit. Kwakwalatsi Child and Family Services and other community agencies also actively train staff and invite guest speakers from other communities to share in their knowledge and success. We're committed to doing things uh, that research supports, and the research says positive, caring, nurturing approaches to youth work. They're, in fact, the only thing that will work. It was essentially the leadership people from the various offices and social services agencies who came, and they had intense interest. Uh, they were riveted the entire day, just focused in, wanted to get what they could to try to find something that would continue to strengthen the work that they're doing. If we do any kind of work with Indigenous people, we have to be absolutely familiar with this dynamic that we call intergenerational trauma. We have to have it seared into our brain if we're going to work professionally with Indigenous people, because every Indigenous person carries this. We're looking to have all of our staff know what the community is all about. So we're looking to change how we deliver services, require training for trauma for all staff, so that even our receptionist, when somebody comes and they're in distress, she knows how to handle it. Median age for Canadians with European ancestry has just gone up two more years. It's now 37. But the median age in Indigenous communities is now 15. Half of us are 15 and younger. So, so children are the right place to put our attention because that's the bulk of us Indigenous populations. But because of your work, you know that you only need to make a slight difference in the life of a child to have it be significant down the road. Somebody my age, you might as well forget it. Your chances of changing me are pretty slim. Uh, but if I were seven, then you've got a chance. Young Aiden has always been a very traditional and active boy connected to his culture. Aiden was also the last child to be taken from the community and put into government care over 10 years ago. Aiden was brought back home under the guardianship of Ashley Wadhams. At first, we had to think about it. It was a lot to think about. We got him out of the care of the ministry. It was nice to get him back into Alert Bay, back into his hometown. Aiden is also fortunate to spend a lot of time with his grandmother, Lorraine Cook, who always knew that staying home would be the best thing for him. I just don't like to see him placed anywhere else because I love him and he doesn't want to move anywhere else. Like if he moved away, he'd lose his culture, yeah. I'd have to say it is his dancing, is his strength right now. That's what he goes to, that's what soothes him. That's what gets him through everything that that poor little boy's been through. We try to look at what is the strengths of the family? How can we build on that? Okay, you are looking at the primary care 
But who's going to help you? With so many grandparents and relatives raising children, Kwakwalatse Child and Family Services saw an opportunity to create a simple, low-cost, and very effective program. The Relatives Raising Relatives program. It's a meal once a month with the families that are raising their relatives, where they can share some of the things that are working for them and, and to just discuss what's going on in the family's lives. The, the elementary kids, the grade seven kids are going to miss tomorrow. We have had different guest speakers come in to talk about elders' rights, uh, wills, estates, forms, and what needs to be done that they uh, need to do for the kids. You know, we just support in any which way we can. Put all of your energy on the positive, and that's when we see success. That's when we see kids who are strong. So, and that's what this community is doing, I think. With, whether it's food or whether it's considering children in care, all those, all those issues, this community has said we want the best. We want wellness. The relationship between the delegated agency and the local Ministry of Children and Family Development Office has been important in making sure the right programs are both funded and effective. So there isn't that us and them happening. We are working for the people of our community. There's also that level of respect and collaboration and focus. We built that relationship with them. They could come over and see that we could look at some problem solving as opposed to being reactive, that the child didn't have to go into care. The people on this island have personal relationships with the professionals in, in, in all of these different agencies as well. We know we're all on the same page. There's no way we could do this alone. We have partners not just in the Numgis First Nation, but we have partners in Island Health. We have partners with the Ministry of Child and Family Services. We have partners in First Nations Health. And we have partners even in the village of Alert Bay. You have to go in with the knowledge or the awareness that you're in there for the long haul. And part of that takes commitment upon the professionals to stay in there. One of the things that I never would have thought of 20 some odd years later was, you know, the fact that we're still doing the work, but we're doing the work with the next generation. And we need to recognize that, we need to acknowledge it, and we need to help to change it. I am very positive about the future of our nation and where we're going and the capabilities of our community members. And they're going to continue on the values of our culture. They're going to continue on our language. They're going to continue on visiting where we used to go and get our fish from, where we used to go and get our clams from. They're going to continue on our way of life. a few things to work through to get them back. You know, I just thought, okay, well, my name's in for treatment center already. I might as well go and complete it and work on myself, and that's what I did. Okay, first of all, I'd like to thank the Numgis Treatment Center for having me, and also to my family and everyone who helped me get here. With the Kwakalatsi helping me out in so many ways, you know, they, they found people for my babies and you know all the the work that they do to work with the parents and to work with other people you know like if it wasn't for them you know my kids would have been in foster care
My husband hosted what they call a hishwila, which is a marking of 10 months because it's in our culture and tradition that if a baby chooses to stay past 10 months, then they've chosen to stay with us here on earth. It was really amazing the, the amount of family members, extended family members coming together. The support we got from everywhere was just overwhelming. To see our grandson being held up in the air, you know, with people dancing around him and his guardians, you know, these guys are gonna guide and protect our grandson. Not long ago, Chanel's grandmother faced some difficult times and had many choices to make. However, there was one option that was never on the table. And their family, community, and nation will always be stronger for it. Care isn't an option. We have it within ourselves to take care of our own children. They are a gift to us. It's our responsibility to take care of that gift. <laughs>